Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for May 15, 2023 at 6 o'clock. Good evening, administrators, council, and our audience. Thank you for joining us today. Ms. Berner, if you would call the roll, please. Yeah. Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Rodewald. Here. Seven members present. Thank you very much. Uh, tonight's invocation will be done by Vice Mayor Grimm. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be together. We thank you for all the wonderful people you've given us as friends and neighbors. We ask that you be with this body as we discuss the uh, business of the city. Help us to make the right decisions that would be best for our citizens and for you. So we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. All right, moving on, need the action on the minutes for the May 1st, uh, 2023 council meeting. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Ms. Eggleston. Any discussion on those minutes, council? And when you're ready, Mrs. Did you have something? There was something, but I forget what it was. I'll have to look it up and let her know. I'll take a second. Got more. Hang on, Mr. Graham has something. Okay. Um, it said I said something that I didn't really say. Oh, when the, uh, they were here about the uh, new development. Somebody, uh, here it is. Number nine, comments from members of the public, second paragraph. Grim notes he asked to have the construction similar. And I actually, I stated that I had asked the contractor, the developer, if, it would, if the uh, aesthetics of the new buildings would be similar to the neighboring, and he said yes, it would be. Okay. Okay, I see. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lindsay, did you have anything? No, nah, I can't locate it right now, Pam. I thought I saw something when I read them, but I don't remember what was that. You okay. should have highlighted it and didn't. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll be, we can fix it next time. Yeah. All right. When you're ready, Ms. Burner. Second was Eggleston, correct? Correct. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwell? We I thought I found it. Yes. Oh. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Those minutes are accepted 7-0. All right, thank you very much. And moving on to communications, Mr. Bridge. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of public. Um, so we have some residential developments coming into town, as we all know. Um, we had a traffic study done a few months ago. Um, since then, uh, some things have changed with the anticipated developments. Uh, first and foremost, the Miami County development did not pass the council, so we wanted to look and see how that traffic volume would or would not impact the existing data that we already had. We also wanted to look at Blue Breaker Drive, uh, where it, in, it exits out by the pool, um, with the assumption that uh, with, if Twin Creek would ever get developed as well. So what we did is uh, went in uh, and ex amended our prior study. And who we here have tonight is Mr. Michael Go uh, Goatmuller, Pat Moeller. He worked for Choice One Engineering. He's been great to work with throughout this process. He's just going to summarize uh, what we had emailed out to council. It is a pretty lengthy report. I have not had time to go over it. Uh, there was a lot of things that were repeated from the uh, original one that we could just rely on to prior knowledge. Uh, but he's here to ask any questions that council may have. So uh, please welcome Mr. Go uh, Goatmuller. Good evening, sir. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to join us this evening. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Uh, like I said, I'm Michael Gautamolo of Choice One Engineering. I'm a traffic engineer. Uh, I got a little over 10 years of experience putting together traffic impact studies um, to 
follow up with what Mr. 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 Bridge said. Um, the study was completed to try to get an understanding of what kind of roadway improvements would be required with this additional development. Um, so I guess we're here tonight just to kind of summarize that and answer any questions that you may have. Um, so just to do a little brief overview of what a traffic impact study is. Um, what we do with the traffic impact study, anytime any sort of development is built, residential, um, a Starbucks, a gas station, a school, um, we want to understand what's going to happen to the roadway and how can we make sure that the roadway is, remains safe and efficient. Um, so how do we do that? We, we start by um, documenting any existing conditions. Is there anything going on currently that we, that's, you know, sparks our eye? Is there anything non-traditional? Um, anything that really stands out to us based, you know, on past experience? And then we collect some traffic data. So we collect turning movement counts. Um, we want to understand how many cars are on the road now. Um, and then from there, um, based on some national manuals, uh, we can understand, you know, for a gas station based on the number of pumps it has, or for a school based on the square footage of the school, or for a restaurant, how many square feet is it? We have an idea of how many trips that development is going to generate. So um, we can prepare some traffic forecast and how many trips a new development is going to generate. And then we take the existing traffic and this new proposed traffic, we put them together so we have an idea of what we think is going to be on the road in the future. And then with that information, we have various software and analyses that we do to help us determine, okay, is the road performing adequately or is it not? And then if not, what do we need to do to make it function all right and be safe and be, um, you know, operate well? And so that's where our recommendations would come in. It's kind of a high level view of what a study is and what we did out here. So what we did, um, our study primarily focused on the Main Street Corridor and um, New Carlisle Pike. Um, so like I said, we went out and we looked at some of the existing conditions. What were some, a couple things that jumped out at us? Um, currently, um, for one, um, the lack of turn lanes at Main Street and Jefferson Street, that was something that jumped out to us just based on the volume of vehicles sitting out there and, and watching the intersection perform. Um, and then two, the non-traditional intersection of Main Street, uh, Gale Wood, and Addison New Carlisle. Um, there's some odd angles at that intersection, some, some offsets with the roadways that make that a little bit unique, not something that drivers would normally expect. So those are just a couple things we noted. Um, in terms of the data collection, the, the turning movement counts that I mentioned, um, we did um, turning movement counts at Main Street, and Jefferson Street and Milton New Carlisle, otherwise known as State Route 235 and 571. Um, we did them at Main Street and Lake Avenue and New Carlisle Pike, Main Street and Galewood Drive and Addison New Carlisle, Main Street and Sigler Road, New Carlisle Pike and Brubaker Drive, New Carlisle Pike and Keys Mill Run. Um, so six intersections that we did traffic counts at, but we actually studied the nine that I have listed up there. Um, so developing that future, future data. We already, you know, we collected the, the existing data, and now we want to know what additional data and additional trips are going to be on the road. Um, working with the city, we understood that there were potentially four developments, um, already one. Um, that development is no longer moving forward, so it, is, it has been removed from the study. Um, RD2, um, that development on, you can see, is just north of town, is approximately 300 housing units. Um, and based on the traffic data and the national data available to us, we anticipate that that's going to generate nearly 2,700 trips a day, or about 200 vehicle trips in the morning, and about 300 in the evening. And those are really the hours that we focus on. We want to understand what's going on in the AM when everybody's going to work and the PM when everybody's coming home from work. Those are the, you know, the hours of the day when traffic is at its peak um, and, and we want to make sure that we design to those hours. Um, so moving down to uh, RD3, the development number three, 
the res there's two portions of that. There's a residential side and a commercial side. On the residential side, that is approximately 360 houses. Um, so we anticipate that that's going to generate a little over 3,200 trips in a, in a day, 200 in, a little over 200 in the a.m., a little over 300 in the p.m. Um, the commercial side, uh, the commercial development, um, it's a, you know, like all of these, they're a little bit of unknown yet, so we're just using what we, our best guess may be. So we used a 70,000 square foot shopping center plaza. That particular, what we call land use, gives us a lot of flexibility. So there's a lot of different land uses that could be in that shopping center land use. But it's also fairly conservative. Um, based on that, we expect it to generate 6,800 trips. So a little over double what those other residential developments would generate, potentially. Um, but during the peak hours, it's going to generate 250 during the a.m. peak hour. So during the a.m. peak hour, it's not going to generate necessarily a lot of trips. Now that could change, you know, when when final end users are known. Um, but in the p.m., it would be about 600 trips. Um, then lastly, moving on to RD4, a large residential development on the northeast side of town. Um, that's approximately 490 housing units. <coughs> Um, that's going to generate a little over 4,000 cars a day, uh, approximately 300, a little over 300 in the morning, and a little over 400 in the afternoon. So, lots of numbers there, I know, but um, so we, we took this future traffic, what we expect to be out there in the future, we combined it with what's out there existing, and then we start running our capacity analysis. Um, once again, I know, I'm sorry, there's a bunch of numbers up here. Um, but we wanted to know with the existing infrastructure, if we had all these trips, what's going to happen to these intersections? And a few things that jump out to us, um, um, just looking at these numbers. Is it all right if I walk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a few things that jump out to us. So at the intersection of Main Street and Jefferson Street, you can see with the existing infrastructure, we're going to what we call level service path. Um, no different than the school, the uh, level of services, it's A, B, C, D, E, F. Um, we want to maintain, we want to be A, B, C, D. Those are what we consider ex an acceptable delay. When we start getting the E's and the F's, that's when we need to start thinking about, okay, so we need to do something different out here to make sure things are operating acceptable. So when we look at the PM peak hour, when we add all of these trips in, you can see we have an we have an F. We have a handful of F's and E, uh, as well as another F down here. So these are the three major kind of intersections. Um, we, we did this for every intersection. But you can see right right away there are a handful of intersections that you start to run into these unacceptable levels of the left that we need to keep operating. So that's kind of where we get to uh, um, what our study recommended. Um, quite a few, quite a few conclusions. Uh, I know this might be difficult to see. I do have larger printouts that I can read with the bills. Uh, we we'll probably have to get out and walk everybody through. Um, but starting, this is the main intersection of 235 um, and uh, Jefferson Street. At that intersection, what our study recommended is installing left turn lanes in all directions. So right now there's a westbound left turn line. We're recommending the blue stripe and put an eastbound left turn line, the northbound left turn line, and the southbound left turn line. Um, in addition to that, we would be recommending to install five section signal heads. Um, that would give the signal additional flexibility to run some what we call protective buildings. Um, that would be you know, the left. Um, and then modify the traffic signals. So relatively minor improvements there in terms of dollar-wise. Um, so as we move north up to Lake in 235, um, so right by the speedway, um, what we're recommending there would be a northbound right turn. 
work on right turn lane, that's due to, you know, we have several developments um, that we were pointing out to RM3, the RM4, on the northeast side of town. So we do one in the northbound right turn lane. Um, in addition to that, we would want to install what we call a right turn area, so we can run a right turn for the left. That way when vehicles are turning left to head south or 70, we can run that northbound right turn lane simultaneously. So just a right turn lane really there and some minor cut tingle in the roof. Um, so is that a, I'm sorry, I don't want to have to, so a right turn going down the pike? Going down Pike Street? Am I? So okay. this would be on 235, sorry. So no, you're fine. I just want to make sure I was. Is, this is 235. Yeah. North and south. North yep. being right. So that turn lane is on 235, northbound, taking the right onto the car. Okay. You get it? He's heading towards the pool. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. And I didn't mention these improvements down south. You know, that is something like I mentioned, like I mentioned in that time. That, Something in the village or the city should really start to consider now. Um, there would be some operation benefits back today as the intersection. These improvements here moving up that lake, um, those aren't warranted until we would get into the argument for so They're a little bit further down the road. Um, there would be some library with more private required to that turn on in. So, so are, are, is your opinion or professional opinion is even without the developments coming in that, that Maine and 571 warrant those turn signals with our current numbers? It, it would certainly provide an operation benefit to the intersection. Okay. If you're a left turner now, yeah. you are holding that traffic down. So it gives them an opportunity to get the low energy. If it's only you know, long enough for a car, it's going to provide an opportunity for those cars to get out of the way. Vehicle to do and what our capacity is showing is a pretty substantial improvement by adding. Okay, thank you. So then moving up to what we're calling in section three, that would be Main Street and Devil Drive. What we are recommending is for Addison and Carlisle to be public stacked, teed. Um, we, we want to, to stop that road because right now the, the way that it enters into 235 is at a very high angle. And as we increase the traffic volumes here, it's, and we're going to get more difficult for drivers to utilize that road in the safe way access to 235. So we're recommending for the closure of that road and then the installation of a northbound left turn lane in this intersection with with the construction of RE2 to probably eventually warrant the city. Um, I do believe even today it can take a while to turn out the other and get on the computer and some excessive noise. Um, obviously with the additional traffic that will be worse. So eventually a signal, northbound left turn lane, the closure of Addison New Carlisle. With the closure of New Addison New Carlisle, we're recommending that a connector road be constructed. So this is a new proposed drive. This property right here would be the future commercial development. So that shopping plaza that I talked about, that would be in this area. That commercial development, what we're anticipating, the traffic of the commercial development, it would also warrant the city. Signal and then northbound and southbound turn lanes, which fortunately this portion of 235 already is a three lane section. There's already you know, availability for those left turn lanes. But we're also recommending for a northbound right turn lane into the commercial building. Uh, as we move forward, or move north just a little bit further, the other proposed drive, this would be to access RD3. That access point, um, once again, recommending for left turn lane on 235. Like I said, it's already wide enough as a three lane section. That is available, but we would also be recommending for the north point right turn lane into that size. And the last intersection that's not shown on here is that Pacific Road. 
That's all along 235. <coughs> we come down to New Carlisle Pike, Brew Baker Drive, eventually with the construction of RD4, we would be recommending for an eastbound left turn lane to be installed. And then as we come a little bit further out to the Keys Run, Run Mill, RD4 develops a eastbound left turn lane and a westbound right. Yes. Before you go any further, the intersection by the pool, the Brubaker and Carlisle Pike, yes. you said what needs to be installed? In Eastbound left. In, on the Brubaker? Okay. Is that, you said that's warranted if RD4 takes off. So RD, RD, are you, do you, you mean the Brubaker subdivision? Because RD4 is not going to have any access to that. Right. Okay. Yeah. So the Brubaker subdivision doesn't develop, it doesn't have enough track currently. To warrant that. Okay. With the construction of RD4, we're going to be adding a lot of through traffic. Okay. And because of that through traffic, <coughs> that left turn lane is going to so Great. Thank it's you. It's RD4, even though it's at the RD3. So, really, no improvements until RD4, if RD4 even happens. That's when we pull the trigger on New Carlisle Pike, yeah. including yeah. the turn lane from North, from Main Street, yeah. turning right. Okay. Yes. And the scope of the case of the is a major driver for a lot of that. Okay. I know that was a lot of information, uh, but I'm more than happy to ask any questions. Okay. Council, any questions? Mr. Lindsay. I have a couple of questions. Uh, you said on the traffic impact studies that in the morning you, you had like 300 cars in the evening you got 400 cars why is there more car, cars at night than in the morning coming back home yeah so um to, uh, to be a great question um the the data that that they put this stuff together i don't have access to that information necessarily but i can tell you based on other subdivisions that we've done we've gone back and we've checked some news accounts and we can back now, what that might be in the PM, um, students that maybe they're start back to school in the morning is a little different than what the AM can tell them the latest. They're coming home maybe a little later after school practice or uh, music that. Or, um, or they have more people that are coming home from work and then they say, oh, I'm going to go get groceries. I'm going to go to the running errands potentially in the evening and do it in the In the morning we wake up out and come in. In the afternoon potentially come home, oh, I've got some of the groceries to go up in the car, cut off. So okay. that is essentially where that comes in, where those kind of things. That sort of makes sense to me. Uh, my other question is the intersection turn lanes <clears throat> that you are proposing, how will those turn lanes impact the businesses? Yeah, that is, that is, there's always certainly other external factors that influence these things, right? So, on those downtown cities, I know that there will be quite a bit of that downtown. But what I'm talking about in that, that I can think about is that if the intersection is functioning better, we will be getting more cars through the intersection than that. What, what we're doing is we're expanding what we call the market area of downtown. There's been a lot of studies done about this where if we relieve congestion in the downtown area, if we get more cars in the number of people that are more likely to come downtown is actually going to increase. So, while we might be getting rid of some parking, right, and there might be some concerns about removing some of that parking, but we might end up doing this if we get more cars in this intersection, we might attract more people. We might say, well, it only takes me five minutes to get down there, or Versus where it would be maybe seven or eight minutes. Or we can put our current lanes in there and the intersection is safer. We reduce the number of crashes at that intersection. So that's 
so that people avoid intersections because they don't feel safe in the vehicle. Now, now if you have turn lanes there, people might feel more comfortable coming down and visiting mm -hmm. going through that intersection. Or, other things or, to think about. Or, or maybe they should learn how to drive in an intersection. That would probably help too. All right, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Mr. Bond. So I'm kind of interested in the, in the pet food. Yeah, road. absolutely. Um, how did you decide where that should go? In that, do you look at other options besides that? That's, that's, a, that's a great question. I probably should have hit on that first. But we did consider a handful of different options down at this intersection. One thing around about. We did look at the roundabout. Down. Now roundabouts are great. There's lots of traffic. No, between um, Gale Wood and, 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 and the new connector. Yeah. But we we are a thousand feet away. No, easily. Can you mention too that there's no traffic light warranted outside of the development of two, uh, for their where their main entrance is? At the main entrance of the residential development, yeah. no, no signal is anticipated. <clears throat> One other question, I think. <laughs> and this may be not something you have planned because actually for uh, property owners is not able to be here, but I told them to ask the question if you can listen online maybe your response. But just asking about the uh, that cut through grill. Yep. How much property is that going to take up? Is there landscaping that could go into that? Sidewalks? Is that all great questions. Um, that is all more like detail design. When that project would go to detail design, you know, yes, there is a property that we need to be required to be able to put that kind of food in. Um, in regards to the acres of that, um, what the section of that would look like, and the city staff and the design. Thank you, Mr. Bond. <clears throat> Mr. Verbal. I know it's in the report, but can you just, for the record, for those who don't read it, uh, when you did this traffic study, what was the AM peak hours and PM peak hours? Uh, great question. They vary a little bit from intersection to intersection, but let me grab those real quick. So, in general, the AM peak hour was between the hours of 7 o'clock 
really probably 7, 15, and 18. Okay. That was the AM peak hour. The PM peak hour, for the most part, looks like it was between 4.30 and 5.30. Okay. With, you know, 15 minute variation at each intersection. Yep. You know. Okay, thank you. For various reasons. Anything else, Mr. Rogan? No, sir. Thank you. Mr. Lindsay? Uh, I'd like to go back to this cut through. Is that uh, there by the uh, Mr. Bond? Is that Mr. White's yeah. area? The uh, so you're saying we would have to acquire that property to do this? There would need to be some right of way acquired to put in a public street. Yes. Hmm. When, when we looked at that, uh, we did try to minimize the number of property owners that would be. In. Okay, thank you. Quick question. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Bond. Did you look at possibly moving that further north past those properties, the, the viability of doing that? Um, you go further north and it becomes basically open land up there. Yeah. So you could certainly move the cut through further north. Um, Which then would space out your traffic signals. It would. It would. But it would also, you would get, you know, you would no longer be on the commercial property. So you could still end up with a signal there, just based on that commercial property. That commercial property alone, depending on what it's going to be, could generate enough traffic to want to see. So you could end up with a signal here no matter what, depending on what it is. Um, on top of that, the RV2 subdivision is consideration. Get them access to 235 without customer okay. existing or something. So increasing traffic on those other side don't have to. Yeah. 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 Do you have something? Anybody else? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Does council wanna would you be okay with taking questions from the audience? Sure. Council, are you okay with that? I have no problem. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, ma'am, do me a favor, just, yeah, because she's got to put this on the record, so okay. you want her to go to the podium, Emily? I can hear her fine. Yeah. Thank you, Debbie. Can you spell your last name real fast? Okay. Thanks. Yes. Um, that was not included in the study. It's not really that to do that. Right. That certainly is something that has to be done. But the whole thing, you know, we're going to try to focus on it. We'll give you plenty of time. Now, if you were, if we were to go with, with her question, uh, coming out of IGA, if, if we were to go with the traffic light at the new connector and at Galewood, then that would leave extra breathing room at the IGA section, would it not, for people to pull out? Yeah, so that, that would potentially be, if you end up with the signal in close proximity, it's a very good point to bring that up, is that Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, oh, okay. oh, I don't like the essential base. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Can I do anything? Mm -hmm. All right. Go, Janelle, give me your, the name and your address for Miss Burner.
Good question. Well, I mean, there's, I mean, there's, I mean, here's the. But there's no parking. Other parking. Well, there's, it wouldn't take all the parking. It would take, it would take a little chunk of it for sure. I mean, I'm not saying it wouldn't, but you know, here's the thing. If I want to go into business X Y Z downtown and there's no parking in front of, I truly want to get to it. I'm going to find a place to park, whether I park in Rite Aid and walk over to it or whatever it may be. I mean, I'm not saying everybody's going to feel the same way I do, but. Did you, I know this is going to, well, I'll get, let's get to that question later because it comes off of this. Yeah. So, because I did want to elaborate and I had a question on that myself. So, anything else on this traffic study? All right. Thank you very much. Very, uh, very helpful because that was a very big packet. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. You want to pack that set out? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Thank you for coming. Good seeing you again. A couple days. I did see you again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'll take it. I just want to know. Sure. Well, yeah, you need to. You need to look at Rite Aid and CBS. You need to look at, you know, maybe cross from the app. What about this? But like I said, the bottom floor, there's four lanes down there, so we're putting no problem. This is a good one. It, 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 I mean, yeah. All righty. Moving on to Mr. Bridge. Back to you because you're a popular person. I tell you. All <laughs> right. Uh, thank you, members. Uh, not Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public. So we have the city manager report. And I'll just start off by verbally going over police and fire report. Uh, police is not here this evening. He might be on a call. Um, so patrol calls taken 270. They had 36 reports. 62 assist, 20 criminal arrest, four felony arrest, six misdemeanors, 10 warrants, 86 traffic stops, 64 traffic warnings, 22 moving si uh, violations, 1,120 business checks, and two code enforcement follow-ups and zero crashes. Um, and then he follows that up with the individual stats for each month. Um, so before I take any questions on this, um, we're going to be doing things a little bit differently with the police report. Um, so the police officer is still going to come to every meeting, but he's going to be doing things that a cop should be doing, watching the door, watching the audience, patrolling the building outside, and then I'm verbally going to give his report. If you have any questions, if he's here, you can answer them. If not, I'll get back to you guys as soon as possible. But I think we're underutilizing that police officer by just having him sit there. Yeah. So he, again, he'll still be present, but he's not going to be here to support, I will. Um, so, any questions on the police report? No, no sir. Thank nope. And the fire chief could not be with us tonight. Uh, he is doing a family event. So, I will read his report as well. So, this is our fire, fire and EMS division. He says, in the month of April, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 68 EMS calls in the city and 14 in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to 11 fire related calls in the city and zero in Elizabeth Township. They had three EMS calls answered by mutual aid, either by Pike Township or Bethel Clark, due to Medic 52 being on a response. And they answered three mutual aid EMS calls for Pike Township and five for Bethel Clark. Uh, that is all he has submitted uh, in addition to his graphic. So any questions on the police or fire, I can definitely report back to council. Council, any questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. And moving on to city manager report, our finance report with our finance director, Ms. Harris.
I just had one. I mean, I know you went over it, and we hear you report every every uh, other meeting, and it's great. Um, just your opinion. I mean, how do you how do you feel of our financial status and, and our projection and where you see it? I mean, I know that we've been doing good and, and getting better every year. I mean, just over, just a little summary of how you feel about it. So you feel, I mean, good with our revenue versus our, our expenditures, is our ratio, I guess, if you will, there? Yes. That we're, we, I don't mean we, I mean everybody is doing good? Yes. Okay. Good. I just wanted to hear it from you. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Move to accept the finance report. Second. Motion from Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Lindsay. Accept. Any discussion? And when you're ready, Ms. Wayne. Councilman Rogold. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Accepted 7 0. I'm going to accept the mayor's court report. Second. Motion by Mr. Vares, Mayor, second by Mr. Lindsay to accept the mayor's court report. I got the mayor. Huh? I got the did I say what I said? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor, you can handle it. <laughs> <laughs> Take it. <laughs> uh, Councilman Rodold. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. It's also accepted 7 0. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Harris. Thank you. And back to you, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm moving on with the city manager report. Our service report uh, presented by our director of public service slash assistant man uh, manager, uh, assistant city manager, uh, Howard Kiko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, <clears throat> members of council, members of the public. Under Public Works Department, uh, we are winding down a little bit for the summer for a citywide tree trimming. We do have some side jobs to do, but we kind of put that on the back burner. One of the big reasons is we're uh, into dirt patching. Uh, we would have continued that today, but the tank where we normally get it was out. Uh, we're waiting on, it's sitting over by the city of Troy. It's a general tank that many municipalities use. So uh, hopefully we can get over there tomorrow, uh, get filled back up in motion and get some more potholes fixed. Uh, we're still waiting on the street light out here to be put on by the shelter house. Uh, AES has approved it, uh, the materials are on order. So that's taken a while. And then with that, the new shelter, uh, we could be breaking ground this week, maybe next week, but AES is still got to take out their pole where that uh, uh, overhead cobra light was uh, out there. They're going to put a new guy wire down into the corner of this flower bed so then we can move that pole maybe closer to the playground set. So we can kind of keep an eye on it in the evening. Uh, street sweeper proposals, if you had seen a couple of them, we did have uh, Elgin sweepers in with a Pelican to do a demo. Uh, it, it was really nice. We watched it pick up about three inches of dirt a pass. So it's mechanical. We're looking at June, I think early June, June 1, June 3, somewhere right in there for the air machine to come in and do their demo. I confirmed that today. Moving on to the water department, we did start private well inspections. Everybody's been real um, communicative with when we go up, show them, tell them what we're doing. 
we have any issues, we do have a property line dispute we're going to work on where the well is right on the property line. Um, we may have to survey that so we can figure out who the actual responsible party. Back in the early 70s uh, to early 80s, there was a handshake on drilling a well on the property line for everyone to share. Uh, different age now. Well 1 is complete back in service. Well 5 just had a new well pump um, installed on it. We had to go down. It was due to be clean next year anyway. So we got seven years out of it where we normally get eight years out of a pump. So it's, um, it, we wish we would have got another week or another year. Pool operations, water crews finished up today with an inspection from the Department of Health of Clark County. They come in, pass our inspection. We have a few minor things that we got to you know, work on, but they're going to open us up because this Thursday to come, some middle school students will be starting their uh, end of year party. Moving on to the sewer department, the clarifiers are still on order, which we anticipate install for those two clarifiers will be sometime early next year. Uh, they, the Peterson Construction likes to do those type of things in the middle of winter. We did kick off our plan expansion study for these developments this past week on 5-9. We ran around with three of the engineers, one who's a process specialist, um, going over what do we have, what can we reuse, what's our flows, what kind of uh, things do we receive in, in our flows currently, industry, what type of properties that we got coming in, just all kinds of stuff. We're thinking to be uh, a packet to us in about six months, so we'll kind of know at what phase, what we might have to do. Uh, to expand our plants down the road. 2022 reconstruction resurfacing. Uh, Falcon will be resurfaced uh, with two new ADA ramps. And along with that, while we have some companies in, we will be doing some ADA ramps at Lake and uh, some white pine spinning. We're going to be starting installing some ADA compliant ramps in the Willow neighborhood. Main Street Curb and ADA ramp project is out for bid. We will be receiving those bids next week or opening, or opening them up. And you'll have an ordinance in front of you um, to do that because the estimate is well over 35,000. Uh, we're somewhere around 250,000 is what the estimate was to do those. Uh, Fenwood Drive is out for bid. I believe bid opening is this week on the 18th, so then we'll know where that project come in at. And then uh, Carlisle Park phase one with the basketball court added uh, ADA accessibility with the swing that is currently in the design phase. And then um, the Nature Works grant with the gazebos. So I can entertain any questions on things in the report or anything else that might be on uh, your mind. Council, any questions? This is Eggleston. Um, you guys have been putting mulch down and that looks really good. What are the chances of getting the shelter house for payment? It's, it's all in a part of a sequence of events. It'll, we'll get to all that. So one, one little step at a time, but we're working on the parts now. We have a, a full five-person crew now. Our new person started today, so we have uh, five full-timers with the public works. Okay. Good? Yep. Anyone else? I had a couple for you, Mr. Kitko. So you, you said you guys are kind of backing off on trees because you're getting into the road repair and things of that nature. So I had mentioned it to you uh, before, and I, I don't know if maybe I didn't point out exactly what I was talking about. I don't even know if it's city property, so it may not be something we can deal with. So if you're coming out of town towards Waterbone, Water, you know, Waterbone's right on your right, and, the, and the, the old train bridge is there. And as it goes, that bank goes down to the creek, there's a bunch of trees growing up, and you can't see the old train bridge, which I always thought that was a nice piece to see. You can't really see it anymore with all the trees. Are those trees there part of us to deal with or is that water? I went back, I believe that some of Water Dog owns some of that hillside because you know we cleared out the whole other side of the right. trestle. Right. Um, I went and looked and then I forgot to follow up with the specifics but their property goes almost down there so I'll, I'll look at, we can trim back from the trestle but I don't think some of our property is right next to the hillside. Right. No, I just I thought it'd be nice if there were some of those trees if you could get them down, whether it's us or if we talk to Waterbog, if it ends up being their property. Because I think being able to see that bridge is nice. It's just kind of part of the town's history. So, um, anyways, uh, moving on. Bencha, you were talking about parks. Um, I, I think we talked about it before, Mr. Bridge. I don't know. Maybe all of us. Um, are we putting any little just small benches out here next to the playground equipment? Yes. We've had a couple of parents request that. We we do. We have we have benches at the at the hut. Okay. They got I think one or two assembled. They're working on the other ones. We just got a mulch and then we're gonna go ahead and get these things set out there. We do have them around the playground set. Okay, great. And that's all I had. Thank you very much. I did happen to 
catch a, a peak of the sweeper in, in action. Uh -huh. That thing is impressive. It's huge. That was amazing. So it was really cool. All right, that's all I got. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Kitko. And moving on to city manager report. Under informational uh, items, we have uh, what we just started talking about last council meeting was the land conservation grant, the city swimming pool. So I emailed uh, council today, the seven page document we're kind of going through, uh, list what we can and cannot do as far as when it gets that conversion. Um, so one of the things we wanted to talk to council with tonight is we have the availability to rewrite, rewrite that nature work grant. And instead of getting the gazebos, we can actually use that money towards a liner. Um, so that's what we want to engage council on tonight. Um, my personal opinion on it as your city manager, um, it's been relatively holding water. And I, Mr. Kiko, please jump in because this is Mr. Kiko's wheelhouse. It hasn't been losing water how it has in the past. Um, maybe we look at keeping the gazebos as a revenue maker for renting and then see how it goes with the liner in years to come. Because um, at the end of the day, the pool itself is at its useful life. Um, and we, if we should have to close the pool, we just have to keep it open for a public use. So not to confuse everyone, but again, just weigh the benefits of putting a liner in versus the overall life of the pool expectancy versus gazebos for revenue maker in the meantime. So that's what we want to engage council with tonight so I can get back with the nature work grant people and then have a discussion with Mr. Kiko on it. Mr. Kiko, you're more than welcome to chime in at any point in time here. We did get an updated quote. This quote did expire on May 11, so it probably would go up a little bit again. But the current price for the pool liner, is it both of them combined? Yeah, they go up the walls so about 117. Okay, about 117 to 118. And that's on the current agreement that expired on uh, May 11, the contract. So it should go up a little bit if he raises the price. But that's what we need guidance on for council. Should council again to reiterate want to stick with the gazebo and that's a sixty thousand dollar grant we are reimbursed forty five thousand of that um, and then the same thing with that liner should we choose to put that money towards the liner um, we'd have the sixty thousand but then we uh, would, would get reimbursed for forty five and be, be responsible for the main council any feedback on that i mean <clears throat> i think the pool needs the gazebos uh, for more rental availability. Like you said, like Howie said, the pool's not losing as much water, so whatever you guys have done over the last handful of years has obviously worked. Um, so, yeah. I would say the gazebos and then use the revenue for the gazebos for, say, for pool improvements. <laughs> My only question is if at some point in time the pool gets past the ability for us to use it, are we allowed to move those gazebos like up to the park or something like that? To I, use? I, would, I would probably would probably advise you to keep them where they're at because that would still have to retain as public land for outdoor recreation. That's part of the land conservation. And then, and then what we could possibly do, I don't want to interrupt, sorry, no, you're fine. is if the pool closes, we can always move the fence back where the basketball courts, the gazebo, the skate park maintains access. So we fall under the nature works grant and, and then just the pool itself. So it's still being used you yeah. the pool itself. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm done. Sorry. Right. Mr. Lindsay. Uh, Mr. Bridge, how many gazebos are you thinking you put up there? Two, three? I think it's three. I think, I think it's three. 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 Three? How big are they? Um, decent size. I think they're by like a 12 by 14. They're, they're, they're pretty decent size, all on a concrete pad with ADA accessibility. They're like enclosed, screened enclosed or something? For, no, or they're not. just all uh, shingled roofs with um, an entry point into it, and then they'll each have their own like uh, uh, banister with railing around it. Okay. So they're not open like the current ones in the park. Right. They'll be more of, you're renting it, you can't just go in and, and walk off of it. It's kind of your own little shelter. Okay. It'll have electric in it too? No, no lights or anything? Okay. Hey, thank you. Anyone else? I think it would, I mean, my two cents is the bigger cost is the liner. And I know how much time and effort you guys have slowed the leak down, but I also have seen how much time and effort you guys still have to spend on the bottom of the pool. I mean, it's, you know, there's, you know, there's still, I guess we'll say, uh, 
you know, cracks and leaks, and then there's the whole maintenance of it, which is, you know, painting and, and, and grinding after you patch it, whatever it may be. Um, it would be easier for us, I think, financially to put the bigger part of the grant towards the liner, because that's the bigger expense versus gazebo. The, the, the liner is going to, it'll be cheaper as far as us using the grant money, thus saves them much more man hours of, of upkeep of the pool. And then if we wanted to add a gazebo, whether we applied for another grant down the road, or what, what's one gazebo cost? Just a ballpark. I, mean, I think they're around six to $8,000. Okay, so it, if we were to have to buy one of the two, I would rather spend six or 8,000 for a gazebo versus 117 for a, for a liner. I think it would be better for us to put the chunk towards a bigger expense versus a $8,000 gazebo. Just my question. Yeah, I mean, I guess the question is, does the city have $100,000 to put into the pool? Because that's what it's going to be, because the grant's only, what, forty five. Okay, you have to come up with a difference, but we have to come up if, difference, if the useful okay. life of that pool was not what it was passive useful life. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, mean, so, I would yeah. not. I would, at that point in time, I would put money to fill in the pool and move forward in a different direction when it comes to passive useful life. Because that one, the liner is only guaranteed for how many years, and it's that's not even, isn't there stipulations with our warranties given the water table? 10 years. 10 years. So it's a double edged sword, it really is. You can look at it both ways. Um, but again, to reiterate, the pool is well past its useful life. Mm -hmm. Sure. But the pool is still vi viable for right now, correct? It's still usable. So, and I, and I understand it's past its normal useful life. If, when it becomes uh, unuseful to us, could we turn it, fill it in, and make a splash pad there, since the plumbing and all that stuff there, and just open it up to the people, to the town? We wouldn't have to have concessions, lifeguards, nothing. It'd just be, there it is, go use it. But is that a possibility to to uh, replace the pool with the splash pad? You would have to go through the conversion process, but that would be. Excuse me, sorry. You would have to go through the conversion process and go help uh, have the state guide you with that. Right. But that's going to be a, a, a public accessible use. Yes. Right. For sure. So, if the liner is only guaranteed for ten years, that's. A little over what twelve thousand dollars a year to uh, for for the liner if we put a liner in it. The uh, I think if we could get another ten grand out of the pool or ten years out of the pool for the citizens, I would have to agree with the mayor to use the money for a liner instead of the gazebos, and I think the gazebos, those sizes would probably be somewhere around 10 to 12 pounds. I think they're, because of everything else has gone out. Uh, I don't know. Mr. That's my two cents on it. He had something to carry off of you. Um, and this might be a question for Ms. Harris, or I'm sure Mr. Fish can answer too. Haven't we been budgeting for a new liner over the last what, three years? Two. So how much is currently in that fund? So there's $80,000 in the pool fund. Okay. $40,000 two years ago, $40,000. So you, yeah. So, but then, so you throw in the other forty-five from the grant, and we got, we got the pool line. Yeah. Am I, I mean, is my math correct, I'm assuming? Okay. That makes sense. And then, you know, uh, do that next year and maybe buy a, a shelter this year and have it one shelter and have it put in to rent and then do the liner next year uh, and then the following year buy another shelter <clears throat> i mean I, I don't know what the rest of the council thinks about the liner and the pool i know at one time i was proposing the pool because it would cost us so much money but it, it has been turned around the leaks has slowed down the liner would stop the leaks altogether, I believe, unless it got ripped or something. And it, it is a, a thin piece of plastic. It's pretty hefty. Am I not correct, sir? Yeah, I believe it's like 60 mil. Yeah, that's pretty thick. <laughs> you know, uh, 
I mean, that's what I think that we should do with the pool if council agrees with that. And council fully does understand where the pool's located on a water table, it could shift. And that's why they're giving it the limited warranty on the, to me, it's just like if they're giving a limited warranty on the product, they're not backing the product. And if I'm misspeaking, please correct me. Well, every, every warranty on anything is limited. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. You know, lifetime warranty instead of a high is only seven years. Most people don't know that. Did the owner of the company sit there and say we should proceed with caution? Yeah, the big thing with this is we put it in, the liner itself is warranty. However, if it, you know, something is not perfect, you know, and whether it's install or something happens underneath because they will have to put extra reliefs where they typically don't do this and we do get air and it, and it pops it or cuts it, that's on us. That's definitely not a warranty item. This will be like on their, uh, the wear of itself. So we do get shipped to concrete on that pull bottom every year, every year. We, we have to go out and use a, some sort of smoothing compound or we'll use a joint compound uh, for pulls, but it's, it's every year, like it, it doesn't stop. So, so you're saying if we put a $117,000 liner in this pool that, and we say we do it this year, which we won't because it has water in it, then next year when it shifts, it could rip that liner and the pool's done anyway. Is that what you're telling me? There's always, there's always that possibility. There's, there's when, I met, when I met with that guy, I said, here's the big thing. If we're going to spend this money, you'll warranty that liner on the liner itself if it, if it malfunctions. But if for some reason you go down there and you, during your inspection, you say, hey, you had spalling concrete caused this to cut that liner. Could it be patched? Yeah, that's all going to be on New Carlisle, and that will not be on the manufacturer. Well, any, you know, anything's possible in life with liners or, you know, I mean, building could blow up, you know, possibly. You know, I'm not saying it is, but it's a possibility. You know, since we're talking possibilities, I mean, we could all drop dead of a heart attack right now, too. Uh, Sorry, I didn't mean to go with that one. <laughs> 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 Mr. Cook gave me a thumbs up. Though. But, uh, so, I mean, I, I, I don't, possibilities are like ifs that may or may not happen. So, again, it, it's up to, you know, the seven of us or the other six of us uh, up here, what they think. So, I'll, I'll just stop there. It's like beating a dead horse to death now, and it's already dead. So, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, gentlemen. And just to, to add on to him, I mean, I, I think I was around when one of those guys were here. I mean, they have put those liners in pools with a similar setup for issues as that. So. And they install it, excuse me, I mean, they do install it. We don't have to do it. Oh, yeah, it. We, don't, we don't touch so it. So they <laughs> install it. So if it's installed wrong, they should warrant to you. They will do that, yes. Okay, because you had made the comment that if it was installed wrong or something, and it, it whatever that it's on us and i'm thinking are we installing this thing? no 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 if they install it and then within that year we get a shift of concrete that cuts as long as it's not a shift it's covered yeah and anything that cuts that liner from underneath we're liable for it no matter what it is okay all right all right thank you sorry sir no you're good mr grim okay this grant is sixty thousand. we pay 45 right gazebos are six to eight thousand right how many gazebos are we going to buy? Plus the concrete. Yeah. Concrete, all that stuff, materials. It's excavation, a full concrete okay. slab. Yeah, there's no grass on any of these things. So how many gazebos would there be? Three. One, two? Three. Three, you said three. Three? Yeah. Okay. All right. That's it. Vaughn. So if you put the liner in, so currently we drain that pool every year. With a liner, don't you leave water in? That's what, yeah, we change the whole process after we put the liner in, it will stay full. Okay, so that should save us a little bit water wise as well. Do you know about, you can just say, like doing the liner, how much that'll save us labor wise on what your guys do because we have a bad leak now? It, sa it, saves, a lot, it saves a lot of time. It will save a lot of man hours when you're at the side with me. Oh, oh, it does. And the paint. I think paint's like, what, $3,000 to paint it every few years? Yeah, we, we, yeah, we usually spend three to five every, every other year. Okay. 
you know, the liner doesn't get painted. And, and just an FYI, it just happened today. Um, we'll be looking to probably work on the, the main line, the two inch line that feeds the pull system. We had a break on it today. It's good old 1950s galvanized and it doesn't look great. We got a, we put a band on it, it held. But. Is, is the liner really the only option? The liner is the only option to make this pull go further. There's no other, there's no cure for concrete uh, unless you do an engineered concrete where you can seal, that's all new stuff. Good. Ms. Sayles. I agree with the mayor and Ms. Lindsay. I think just throw it towards the <clears throat> throw the money towards the liner and with what we've got we go ahead and get the new liner in. But and do that next year, right? Pool is always a year. I think next year is the optimal time to do it. And there's, and if I'm understood the, the director, the financial director correctly, there's going to be another forty or forty-five thousand dollars put in that fund for the liner this year. So we've got the money; we could still do the liner, have so the money for the liner, no, and use the grant money the to buy the shelters. Shelters, we with, and we could do it all next we year. If if they're still going to lose money. If any of you guys heard the same thing I heard. <laughs> And Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Harris, you said we have eighty thousand dollars right now, right, for the liner. We Right. So will, will it be another forty thousand going into that that pot this year at some point? Okay. Okay. So you said that we've been saving money for two years, and there's eighty thousand. That's forty thousand a year, correct? For the line. Right, for the line. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, okay. Yes, it's that side right now. The fund I mean, if the general fund can afford it, then I don't see why it can't have another forty thousand put in at some point this year. And what I was telling council that. That would give us uh, 120,000 for the liner. The liners, I believe you said 117, 118 for the liner. So, somewhere in that area. Uh, so that would just about cover the liner. We could order it this year, have it installed next year. That way we get this year's pricing on it. And then use the grant money and still buy the three gazebos to put in and do that next year also. Well, that could be done this year. And then do the liner next year. So another thing too with this particular pool is against passwords useful life. Well, I, I understand that. money every year. So another option you guys can do is look at taking that 80,000 you had saved and actually Acquiring new park land and making a new park and going forward and selling that pool and getting it off out of the city's hands. So that's another option that no one's talked about. Because part of that conversion process is to take existing land that's not dedicated as a public use and make it public use. And that would satisfy the conversion requirement if you read that seven page document I gave you guys today. So what that would do would alleviate the city losing money every year, but yet still retaining a pool inside of the city limits. So it's just not making a lot of sense to me to drop that much money into a pool that loses nine, ten thousand dollars, or, or how much it loses. We're losing that much on that pool. So that, that's yeah, just another I option for you guys so. to think about. Uh, Hang on, let me jump in. So, yeah, yeah, sir. And I know this is going kind of deep now. Okay, so I yes, I know the pool typically uses money. There's a few years where it broke even or made a few thousand. Nothing, nothing huge. It's never made $20,000. I think the most, what it, it's maybe made 4,000 on its best year here in the past, I don't know, two to, somewhere in the neighborhood under 5,000 is profit at some point, maybe once or twice. Um, and the issue that you guys keep, that the, the administration I see keeps bringing up is that it loses money off. Not as bad as what it was years ago. It was losing $75,000 a year, which is 
that was a lot for especially for the city to, to lose that much when our general fund was going forward. Um, we're in a little better position now, not that we want to just waste money away. So let's just say it's it's losing some years in the neighborhood of you know anywhere from nine to we'll say fifteen because I don't have it in front of me. Um, if if and I agree the pool is at its point where it's the building itself is in pretty good shape. Mr. Kitko has done a great job of getting the bathrooms up to date and things of that nature. But if the concern is the pool of losing so of losing money, but we're putting a shelter house back here that I brought the idea of putting that shelter house down at the pool and making it a rental piece for the pool under the same fund would have generated money and that idea was shot down quicker than anything that I've ever seen. So it, it doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I understand that it's losing money, but if we would have had the opportunity to take that shelter house and not congest Smith Park, put the new shelter house down where the pool was on the old pad where we're talking about the gazebos, which is basically what we're doing now. We're taking three small gazebos and we're gonna make a few hundred bucks off of them versus when we could have taken that whole shelter house that was done by, by grant money, put it down there. It's now part of the pool area. It's gonna generate you know, I don't know what this place generates somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to, you know, high teens to $25,000 a year. That would have been the better place to do it, offset the loss of the pool, and the pool could possibly grow and gain money and, and do some of these updates on its own. But, you know, that didn't work out, unfortunately. So um, that's just my two cents. I mean, if we really wanted to curb the loss, that's where that shelter house should have went. Mm. One of the things that we need to do is provide services for our residents. One of those is a swimming pool. Or a splash tank. One of the two. They're going to have something unless, to pull off with. Unless the uh, losses get outrageous, like 60000 70000 I'm going to be a favorite keeper of rent. I don't remember ever doing that. The most I remember the pool loss was, I think, 40, 40 or 45000 I think it was 40000 back in 15, I think it was. And that's the most I, I know that the pool had lost. But if, if it, it, it appears that the, if we keep hearing the pool is at its end of its useful life, we can fix that and get another 10 years out of it, maybe with the liner. Yes, it, it's a lot of money, but we, we talked about a liner six years ago, you know, and uh, and just two years ago, we started banking money for it. If we started banking money for it six years ago, we'd have a liner in that pool. Instead of sitting here today talking about, are we going to put a liner in a pool or not? So, you know, uh, I think council needs to make the decision on this pool. We either put a liner in the pool, we turn it into a splash pad, or we sell. I think those are our three options. You can't sell it. Uh, shut it down and dig it out, fill it in, make a garden out of it. Just an FYI. <laughs> you know, yeah, I know, I forgot. Uh, yeah, we, we tried that, didn't we? Right. So, uh, you know, uh, the, the citizens, the kids or the citizens has, has come to use in that pool, I think. I don't know how much they use it last year. We don't tend to get those numbers on, on people that comes in and use and the parties and stuff. I assume they're still having parties. I don't know. Uh, so I, I think council needs to once and for all, once and for all, make a decision and do it. You want to, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. I am going to yield to Mr. Bond, sir. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't you just say that we can sell that pool as long as we convert the same amount of property right. somewhere else? Yeah, yeah re just review that seven-page document we gave you. It's like a yeah, process. So you have to take fair, and this is going off memory, and don't quote me word for word, it's fair market value of the land. You would have to buy land or take land you already own that's not dedicated as a public park. So let's just say that's valued at 215000 We have to buy $215,000 of land that's not considered a public park to make the public park. And then turn around and give the pool away for a dollar. Does that make sense to anybody? Well, we have new developments coming in that have a lot of land to follow with them. Right, right. But maybe there's an opportunity in one of those areas. 
I don't know. But is this something that we have to make a decision tonight on? No. You want a motion? I on need it? a motion as far as liners or gazebos so we can let I can get back a hold of the um, representative we're dealing with. But I feel like we have just some other options here that maybe we have thought completely. Well, the, the grants in play just the grants we've got it right it's just it's basically got to be decided left or right somebody want to make a motion i'll make a motion to go with the liner with the grant and i'll second that as mr mayor first yes and was the second yes any other discussion? We do bad work today. Yes, when you're ready. <laughs> Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. This is putting the grant money toward the line. For the line. Correct. Yes. Councilman Cook. No. <laughs> Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. That motion passes six to one. All right. Knock that one out, Mr. Bridge. I will get back with you guys tomorrow as far as the next steps. Thank you. I'm sure it was a hard decision. And it would probably be this fall. So, to put it in? Yeah, spring's a bad time to try and install a liner with the wet weather. Oh. Cool. So it'd be after it closed. Okay. So even though the motion's down, it's passed. I did have one question. And I'm not trying to go back and push. So the pool, when it was developed, was it was it constructed to drain the water out of the year? So my question is, if you now have to leave water in it at a certain level because of this new liner, is it going to be able to hold the, fr the freeze thaw cycle? No, it's probably enough underground it won't freeze. Well, I'm just saying, huh? Well, it'll expand up. You, you, you well, have it expands to, up and out. You okay. have to ex drop the water below your intakes and blow those lines out, plug them. The water, the, the drain at the bottom of the pool is far enough underwater it will not freeze. I'm not talking about the drain, I'm talking about the water left in the pool. Yeah, he the said top, he the the top's going to freeze, but, but it so won't hurt. Well, you'll drop it just enough to get it below so we can drain the pipes that are right. only about the under the underground. Spring. Everything else, like my pool at the house, it, it will freeze, but it doesn't move. Okay, so it's it, not going to expand it and crack it, the foundation. Right, right. Okay. Thanks. We can just run the heater. Open the ground. <laughs> yeah, the polar bear swimming pool. We got a heater. Can That's a hot tub all in the winter time. Yeah, I guess you could. Crank it up. There's an extra degree. Right. It's right. a whole different pass. <laughs> <laughs> all right, moving on, Mr. Bridge. On that pool. What's that? For the hot tub. Yeah. Oh. Without a motion, sir. <laughs> no. I'll, I might go to that. <laughs> all right. So moving on to the city, and thank you for that uh, discussion. I'm sure it was tough for you guys to come up with that decision. <laughs> So uh, Carla, the Carla One Alcohol measure, uh, Ballot Measure Update, we had a meeting uh, last week and a half. So what we did is went ahead and mailed the forms out to the Nevada Division of Liquor Control. We are waiting to hear back of the list of uh, effective permit holders. Once we have that, then we can start collecting signatures. And then we have on June 12th, in conjunction with the Charter Review, the, uh, how we're going to set up that public inf information campaign. Uh, the council's uh, supposed to do according to the resolution that we passed. At the last meeting, we kind of had a, uh, it was just kind of making a joke of the slogan, but I think it's going to stick, I hope it does, and that is keep it classy New Carlisle because we don't want to sell shots of liquor. So we're going to keep it classy or keep it classy. Who pitched so, that one, you? Uh, actually, it was me. Oh, okay, I didn't hear it. Yeah, no, it was at our meeting. So we'll, we have another meeting Wednesday <clears throat> at 7.30 a.m. Um, to kind of go over some next steps and then we'll definitely update the council as needed. Awesome. Mr. Rodewald, do you have a question on that? Sorry, hand was up. So you're, you're saying we're not going to serve just shots? or, or? It, Yeah, so more than likely, and it's going to be Councilwoman Eagleson's sole decision, um, so no single shot. So someone would be able to serve like a Jack and Coke or a margarita, but you won't be able to go in and just get a single shot of liquor. And the reason you want it like that, if you're going to get a single shot of liquor, um, you don't have to have a set a sick permittage of your establishment selling food. So that would prevent like a dive bar coming. So that is again awfully Mrs. Eagleson's decision in the group. Mm -hmm. Sir. Uh, some restaurants uh, they have a bar in the restaurant and I mean you can sit there and eat and order food and 
some people will drink a, take a shot and then kill it with a beer. And if they want to do that, I don't see why would we would restrict that. And it, you know, single shots isn't a, a, to, to use your wording is not just in a dive bar. You know, and I really wouldn't want it just a straight bar uh, inside of the city mm -hmm. limits. If it isn't a restaurant establishment, and they, and like I said, some of them do have bars. I mean, I think uh, uh, what is it, Texas Roadhouse? I think they have one. It's been a while since I've been there, but I think they have one. So you can sit there and order your steak, get a shot and a beer, down the shot, drink the beer with it, and then get you know whatever you want to do. You know. I, I don't, as far as restricting what people can drink, I think, in my opinion, is asinine. It's like telling them that, you know, you can't only use five minutes of electricity in your home. Two things. One, <laughs> that's a state of Ohio law. And two, that should have been discussed before council passed a resolution naming Ms. Eggleston as the uh, head of that little initiative. So there was a group discussion about having mm -hmm. that, and the fear is, if you do that, it turns into dive bars. And that's not really what we want in our downtown. You know, your I do, your thing about the restaurants and stuff like that, 40% of their sales are food. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that's a little different than someone going in and having no food and just going in and getting a bar. I mean, a beer and a, a shot of liquor. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but then again, to reiterate, it's based off the state of Ohio with how they classify mm -hmm. it. Ultimately, the most important thing here is that it is, again, 100% the petitioner's decision. And council has uh, named Ms. Eggleston as that decision maker. So um, she has been very gracious with listening to the group and their concerns. Mm -hmm. And it's just me and Ms. Eggleston that's affiliated with the city. The rest is non-affiliated members of the city. And these are people that are really wanting to get behind it because they have the businesses they want to start in doing this and why they're doing it here in New Carlisle. So uh, I understand your concern, but again, it's out of my hands, it's out of everyone's hands, it's in Ms. Eggleston's hands. In but most Ohio. people won't go into a restaurant to drink beer in a shot. They usually eat. If I, if I was going to drink a beer in a shot, I'm going to a bar. Okay. I, I'm going to stay home and do it because I wouldn't be able to drive home after I did it. But, uh, but when I drank, I went to a bar. I didn't go to a restaurant to drink. You know. yeah. So another thing too you want to look at, you want to look at how this is going to be presented to your voting public, who is going to be your ultimate decider. And what we found just through the group discussion is when you add these shots by the glass and these bars, it's kind of a lot harder to get past that at the polls. So you kind of start here and then you kind of work up to that as it comes, as years on down the road. But I, I, don't, I don't think when we made the motion and we passed the resolution, that anybody up here was thinking of a bar they was all in my mind i was thinking of a restaurant that served alcohol and that's the only way we're going to get a a decent restaurant in here because all of them serves alcohol and they'll still be able to serve alcohol right and they can get a shop there if they want it correct or not i according to this then no they won't be able to sell shot by the you would not be able to get a shot of whiskey in the shot glass but you'd be able to get a mixed drink. But you'd be able to get a mixed yeah, drink. Yeah, you'd be able to get a mixed drink. Okay. Or, or Coke on the rock. Or, or Gak on the rock. Or yeah. or a, a liquor Gak in a the mixer rock. or something like that. But to get like a straight shot of tequila is not going to be good. Unless you get it on the rocks. Yeah. Unless you get it on the rocks. <laughs> the world would want tequila. Well, I don't know if that even applies. <laughs> so it's still a shot of spirits liquor, just not mixed with yeah. anything. Mixed with the rock. You get it on the rock. How is how is um, with you guys? I'll ask you both if you guys deal with this. What kind of feedback are you getting? I mean, I know you aren't knocking on doors, but I mean, what are you getting? A lot of positive. Yeah. Funny, I thought she's good. Yeah. 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 yeah, I haven't I haven't talked to a bunch of citizen group. They were just not there. That right, right. right. Uh, but I think it's going to be generally positive. Yeah, I do. Alrighty. All right. Hold, well, hold on. Just a little piece of trivia that I found out from David Porter. The, the article he posted? Yeah. That was great. 120 years ago this year was when this wild went by. It was a big thing. The article was great. Wow. It was the day we had our meeting. Years ago when that bag went dry. It was cool. All right. Well, for the sake of time, can I move on? Yes, please. All right. So moving on, the fire and EMS health levy. Thank you, voters. 
I got some stats here. Um, so we had a, um, overall a 6.8% voter turnout. So thank you for the 225 voters in New Carlisle who voted for our levies. <laughs> we appreciate it. <laughs> thank you much. Uh, the Fire and EMS levy voted yay 193, no uh, 31. The health levy was yay 163, no 62. Uh, the county a total was around 427, so we accounted for half of the county vote. So it was an off year when you look at the ballot. There really wasn't much on it, but hey, we got we got what we needed passed, and um, we will continue on doing great work with your levy money. So thank you, citizens. Um, any questions on the health levy or fire and EMS levy? No. No. Oh, great. So New Carlisle health, health stats and the Clark County Public Health. Both of those are attached to this manager report. Take a look at that when you get a second. This is a public service announcement. We are hiring a code enforcement position right now. Uh, it's up to tw uh, 30 hours a week, 20 plus dollars an hour to start. We do hire, train, hire character train skill. Um, so we are looking to fill that position. Ideally, we'd like to have two. Um, but as uh, we do got two applications for that and two resumes already, uh, we just put it on Facebook not too long ago. So please spread the word. And one last piece of information that's uh, on the city manager report. We have the DR Horton development. That's the one off 235. It has now been named the reserves at Honey Creek. One of the things I wanted to discuss with council, um, so you guys will have your uh, meeting with them on June 5th for the plat. You guys already approved the plan. The plan has to do with the zoning, the setbacks, the um, roadway widths, all that good stuff. Well, I'm sorry, not the roadway widths, the setbacks, the, you know, how, uh, how far away you're from your side, property line, or property line, all, all that's been established. So what you guys are coming to on July, uh, June 5th is taking that one big piece of land and breaking it up into the smaller pieces of parcels that they want to do. So um, as we had some meetings prior to this, it has now come out to uh, be known that they are no longer planning to do a rental sign. So they are now looking to do all sales side. So um, how it was presented to council was all the meetings was rental side, a little bit smaller lots. Um, they wanted it segregated with its own entrance and then they went to the island. Um, so through market research that they just got back not too long ago, they are not finding that supportive of being rentals. So now they would like to make that all sales side. So we would like to know council's opinion on that um, and see what your guys' two cents are. Again, you guys will uh, have a meeting with these guys on June 5th to discuss the preliminary plat. And at that point in time, you guys can probably engage them about how and why they came about with the change from the sales to rental. Um, so I just wanted to inform council tonight. Um, I've talked to a couple of you already. There hasn't been too much of an issue with the change to rentals. Um, I know that was an area of concern with some council members as far as the number of rentals and being able to fill them all. Um, I will definitely take some feedback now um, if you would like to give me some. Um, but again, you guys will um, have a chance to meet with these uh, develop uh, the uh, RDR Horton June 5th in person when you deal with the preliminary plat. Not to be winded, and one more thing about that preliminary plat, they do have one variance they're going to be seeking, and that is a road width. So right now, our code is, is very antiquated, and it says that our road uh, for that type of, uh, it's called an urban road, should be 36 feet pavement pavement. That is just asphalt to asphalt. That is not where the curb starts. It's really just pavement to pavement. Um, so to give me an example, Fenwick, Ken Fenwick, Kennison, and Funston, they're all 23 feet. Um, the subdivision is proposing 24 feet. In comparison, Edgebrook, is t Edgebrook and Glen are 26 feet. Greenheart, Leatherwood, White Pine, I mean, sorry, Greenheart, Leatherwood is 26 and a half. White Pine is 27 and a half, and Lake is 38. Um, so we consulted the fire chief on this. He has zero issues with that with that uh, width. And again, that is just pavement to pavement. That is something that council is going to be voting on at the June 5th meeting with them. So I just wanted to get it here, here early. This is why I emailed you guys the planning board packet that's going to be meeting tomorrow. You guys will get your own packet before then, but at least we'll give you a little bit of time to digest it. But again, we already looked it over with our service director and our fire chief. They're okay with the 24 feet. And quite frankly, it's pretty standard with some of the developers are doing nowadays. I think some we saw from a developer doing maybe in Spring, Springboro, don't quote us on that, it's like 22. Um, and then I think one was as small as 19, if I remember correctly. So um, not anything too out of the box they're, they're hoping for, but I at least wanted to give your guys a, a heads up. Do I have any feedback or comment that I could take back to DR Horton prior to the June 5th regarding the rental versus sale side? Or is that something council just wants to think about for a little bit and just discuss it June 5th? 
I mean, just my two quick two cents. Um, I, I like I like that plan better actually. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that the town needs rentals. I mean, you see people looking for rental property all the time, but I, I think that's a better move. Okay. Anyone else? On? I, I I agree with uh, the mayor uh, on the roads. I think the the width. You said they wanted 26 feet. No, 24. 24 feet. I don't give you a whole lot of room you, you, to, to, for two cars to pass when you got cars parked on the street. And the, what is the width right now that they have that they want to do a variance from? They want to do 24 feet, pavement with gutters 28 feet. So you're going to gain a little bit more. So it's got to pay 24 is just pavement to pavement. So you get about, I don't know, what's the math on that? You get six you inches. You get four foot of gutter four pan. Four foot of gutter pan. So you get 28 foot of drivable area. Okay. Mm. Most of these houses will have two car driveways, yeah. unlike most of our houses here. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I know the chief said that fire chief said he didn't have a problem with it, but that's kind of narrow for a pumper to go down through there, or a couple of pieces of equipment. Uh, personally, I would uh, suggest they stay at the 28 foot or whatever it is now. The code is 36. That seems a bit. It, it not 36 in the in a plat. That's what, it, that's what our code states. Like. I mean, we don't need Lake Red Avenue running through a plat, but mm -hmm. you know, uh, if, it, if it's 36 to go down to 28, 28 would probably be good. So this is only but they're a foot, 26, right? So this is only a foot narrower than Edgebrook. So it's six Edgebrook inches is inside. extremely wide. It seems it, but it's actually not much wider than some of the others when you only count. So it's just about the same width as Edgebrook? Just it's a foot smaller. What okay, well Six two inches. cars can pass on Edgebrook, I yeah. think, if there's two cars parked on the curb on the street. Which which you Edgebrook? can't get it? Yeah, yeah. off the yeah. lake or they're, they're both the same width. So okay, so all it's yeah. over. And, and most of our current streets use eighteen inch gutter pans, so you get three. Well the current the drawings are using is they're using four foot of gutter. Glenn is another one that's uh, 29, and again, Funston's 20. Yeah, we'll have, six. well, Funston is, you can hardly ride a bicycle down the street there with people parked on the street. But again, it's I, really narrow. Like, I guess like we'll I, down there. there. Yeah, you ain't getting around it. <laughs> you ain't getting around it. Just take into consideration uh, we'll, we'll some of the around. variables that come into play, like how often you're going to, you know, how often, like, God forbid, we ever need a pump or truck back there, you know, stuff like that. You know. And again, most just it depends if you have an arsonist move into town. <laughs> I hope not. All these houses are going to have two car drives. Mm -hmm. It's guaranteed. Some will have three. Um, so, unlike Funston, where they all have one car driveways, so you have two, you have two, two cars in a household. You only put one in that driveway, and the other one's going on the street. Uh, here, I mean, you can go to all new flats. The majority of there's very, very few times that cars are actually on the road in, in new flats. Uh, the majority of them are in their parking in that way. But there's a possibility they could have a party and have four or five cars. Right. Yeah. You know, we always have possibilities. I mean, I'm not willing to add thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on this development because you want to add one more foot to a road when 28 feet is more than enough for 80% of this city already. All right. Mm -hmm. Any other comments on that? Or do you guys want to just let it stir and we can go over Yeah, that's fine. Discussion with them. Do you have anything else? I, I like the idea of not doing rentals. So, you, so that one of the things, the, I, I, but I do like wider roads. You have one shot at having wider roads, yeah. and that's when you put them in. Well, well, make it wider. wider roads lead to people speeding. Giving that right now, take Lake for example. The wider no, the road, that'll give our the wider minutes. the road, the quicker they're going to be. So it's your eyes is ultimate decision on that. Um, but definitely keep that in mind, you know. But again, so something to do on. Well, how the what's, what's Lake? 36, 36. 38, 38, 38 pavement to pavement, and then with uh, gutters 41. Yeah, Lake's got enough room to put a turn lane, like two or three. Put a roundabout middle of Lake. Yeah, what's about. what's Clay? Uh, we didn't measure clay. It's about 40. How did you measure? Clay, it's about the same as... Clay's all, clay, they're all in that 26 to 29 foot. They're, almost all our streets are within a foot of each other, except for the <coughs> boulevard. You're late, you're Jefferson. Um, I think clay is 
I think it was 28 or 29. I didn't measure, but I tried to welcome everyone on another list I got. The only other thing you might talk to them about is I still notice in one of these here, they didn't put a green space buffer on the back end of the one group of houses that back up against some of the commercial property. So that would be something that I would like to see them do when they're revamping this. I didn't wonder, I read. Is put a buffer primarily behind the lots that I own, the commercial lots there. They have, they have a green space buffer behind the lots for the bigger shopping center or whatever. But the other commercial lots that are down at the other end, there's no was that but. was that discussed when you guys approved the plan? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I asked them for that. Was it voted on by council as a whole, or did you ask them for it? I was just asking them to put that into their plan when they finalized it. So I, I'm guessing okay. because they're changing it now, I'll they give, can change that too. So. I'll give you a call just so I make sure you understand it correctly. <clears throat> did he acknowledge that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it wasn't done by a formal motion of council. No. Okay. I'll give you a call just to make sure I'm understanding it correctly. All right. Back to you, sir. Thank you. I thought they said they'd put that buffer in. Yeah, he, was gonna, yeah, he was going to look into it. So, he said he didn't realize why they didn't do yeah. that. So. Thank you, sir. I'm good. Okay, that's all I have for the city manager report. Happy to move on. All right. I have sir, a question. Sir, <laughs> Mr. Bussner has questions. Fireworks, five or six weeks away. Yeah. <coughs> Parks and Rec running them. I don't. They don't. Uh, you you Do we have that. a parks and rec? No. Got, no. We don't have a full mm -hmm. board, so no. We don't have enough people to have. So then it's up to us again. I mean, depending on how crazy you want to get with it, yes. <laughs> okay. And in the past, the same day we have the community garage sale, we have the community cleanup. Have we given any thought to that this year? It's already been it's already promoted on Facebook and everything. Yep. Community cleanup? Mm -hmm. yep. I haven't seen it. Yeah, it's, it's, on the the, it's on the Facebook page, the New Carlisle page. Um, it's been shared across Facebook. Okay. When exactly is it? Do you remember? Is it the weekend after? It, it's Saturday, June. What's the first Saturday in June? First Saturday. So it's before. Well, crap. That's June 10th. It's June 10th, uh, 8 a.m. to 11. Okay. Anything else? Yep. That's it. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, moving on, uh, community reports, Sunday night comments from members of the public. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, all the above, please go to the podium, uh, name, address, and please try to keep it to five minutes. I will keep it in time. Anyone? All righty. Move. Five, four, three, two, one. You lost your chance. All right. Resolutions, Monday night, moving on to ordinances. Ms. Burner, if you would, please. Ordinance 2023-30 introduced on May 1st, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city of New Carlisle, Ohio to lease a portion of the city's waterworks property to the New Carlisle Baseball Softball Association Incorporated and Ohio Nonprofit Corporation. So moved. Second. Uh, explanation of this ordinance. This uh, allows the city to lease the Haddock's Field, um, but this year we kind of took uh, some of the big burdens off of them. So any permanent structures will be the responsibility of the city. Any structures they can pick up and take, take them should they happen to move would be their responsibility, as well as cutting the grass. Council, any discussion? When you're ready, Ms. Burner. All right, Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Roadwald. Abstain. Can you state your sure. reason, please? My organization. Okay. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. That passes 6-0-1. We have Ordinance 2023-31 introduced on May 1st, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance supplementing certain appropriations contained in New Carlisle City Ordinance 2022-62. So moved. Motion by Ms. Lindsay, second by Ms. Eggleston. It's an explanation of this ordinance. This ordinance allows us to uh, expend some funds that was not originally budgeted. We have 50000 for additional infrastructure expenses in our water fund and 106500 for additional clarifier expenses in our wastewater fund. Council, any discussion? 
When you're ready, Ms. Burner. All right. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsey? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. That passes 7-0. <clears throat> Ordinance 2023-32, this was introduced on May 1st, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance extending the franchise for the curbside collection and disposal of residential garbage, refuse, and recyclables in the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Roadwall, second by myself. An explanation of this ordinance. We have a contract with waste management that expires uh, end of this year, December 31st. Um, so part of that contract is we are able to do one successive two year uh, renewal at rates mutually agreed upon. So waste management did submit the renewal rates. Uh, Mr. Mayor, would you like me to read them for the record? Please. So uh, for a standard 96 gallon uh, rate, uh, a, a rate a year one would be $22.75. For the low volume 64 gallon, is it a, a $19.17 and a $13.89 a month for senior. Uh, for rate a year two increase, uh, the 96 would go from $22.75 to $23.88. The low volume 64 gallon, gallon would go from $19.17 to $20.12. The senior would go from $13.89 to $14.58. Over the course of two year, the most that was increased was just over $4. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You guys have a tough decision, so good luck. Council, <laughs> any discussion on this? This is the time to do it. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I'm not gonna to dictate to our residents who they have to hire to haul the trash away. Right. Mr. Cook. I personally think that we're doing the citizens of this great city a very serious disnomer from the fact that we are going out for, well, I won't say going out. We're extending a contract without looking at what is available. You have received information that what's been going on in the, I guess the world is what the world the communities i think we need to vote this ordinance down thank you mr cook anyone else Ms. Eggleston. i agree with mr cook i think we need to put it out for She basically agreed with Mr. Cook. Okay. I thought, what did she say? I see her lips moving. Was she saying something down there or what? Go ahead, Mr. Robol. You did have something, correct? I did. Okay. I Sorry. Did. Um, the old adage, grass isn't always green on the other side. Um, it's going to pertain to this. The thought that the bids are going to come in cheaper than what the proposed extension is. Um, I don't want to say laughable, but it's not going to. Um, <clears throat> the bid will come in at this current price since the bid has already been put out and made notice. They made public. They know where they're, they're going to beat you at or try to get to. Um, you, know, it, you know, the old adage, if it's not broke, don't fix it, pertains to this. Um, you know, is waste management perfect? No, no one knows. No businesses. Everyone's, there's always going to be someone who's not happy. Um, but I think their uh, satisfaction rate, from what I understand, is fairly high. Uh, majority of the issues that they have actually turns out to be the citizens' issue, whether it's mispayment or not uh, making them aware of a large item pickup or, or just whatever it may be. Um, but I just hope if we put out for bid and it comes in higher, we all. We all uh, can relate to our, our citizens that you know, are shot and missed. Good? Yes. Thank you. That's a possibility. Yeah. I, um, 
I thought I had my decision on this made walking in here. And, and I thank you both. I'm assuming she's with you. <laughs> uh, but thank you both for coming. I, I appreciate that you guys, have, and especially Sean, has come to numerous meetings. So I appreciate you taking the time to come out and, and just listen to hear what we've been saying. Um, I, I am literally 50 50 on this. I, I don't even think yet I know how I'm going to vote on this. I thought I did because um, I see it both ways. I mean, it's, you know, I, the numbers that we are presented. I think they're fair because we all know the prices are increasing. Um, you know, I was, a, you, know, you almost have to expect some sort of increase. I mean, it's just, it's inevitable. I think everything goes up in time. Um, what does scare me is going into that tunnel with no light, not knowing what we may or may not get. It could come out better or at least equal. Um, and that would be great. But if it was to come back, let's just say, you know, let's just say just for a horrible conversation sake, it comes back $10 higher than you know, what the numbers we are presented. Then it's like, oh wow, now we really have to answer to why we went that route. But, you know, I guess you could argue, well, at least we took that shot and, and, and did what we thought might, may have been the best route. Um, that's, it's a tough one. It is a tough decision. <laughs> um, that's all I have to say. But again, seriously, thank you guys for coming. I appreciate it. You have something? Go ahead. I have a question. Please. So when you, and best of luck to you with this vote tonight, uh, Sean, and I'm assuming you're Shanda, so Sean. Uh, so when you do and uh, bring on your municipality for the first time and you get that year one quote, do you bring into that quote the cost of producing the extra bins that you're on to deliver, the cost of the bins themselves? I mean, how does that go into your cost of business with how you do a municipality that you haven't serviced before? Do you eat that cost of your bins or is that built into the cost of the first year of the contract? You do build it in. So it would be an additional cost that our residents would not pay now because the trash bins are already there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Say that one more time because I didn't so like the, when rump when rump people like their first year numbers are, are going to be to account for the new bins they have to create. Right to, to supply the so city. supply the city. Sure, gotcha. So you don't front end it on year one, recoup your cost, and then sure. I just curious how that works. So thank you for the explanation. Yeah. Oh no, you're good. You're good. Let me ask a question. I wish our attorney was here. Is it unethical for us to ask them questions right now? Uh, no, I don't. We're not talking. No, I don't think so. Right. Um, I don't know if I even have any. I just. I mean, uh, there's a million things going through my head you're right now. You're not disclosing the big uh -huh. numbers and not disclosing okay. any. Go of ahead, that. sir. So, ma'am, if if. Uh, and even let me catch up where you go. I mean, even if we voted down, it goes to bid. That doesn't even mean they would still get it. It could go right back to his bid. I, I don't know if I would yeah. like go into detail because I mean it's, it's an unfair advantage. But I'm exactly. no attorney. I'm no attorney. That's I'm what I'm no, saying. If I'm you no don't want to start getting into, hey, can you do this or this? No, it's not. A, a, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't even ask right. him that. Mm -hmm. But it, it's borderline. But it ain't breaking that line. <laughs> How do you feel about uh, buying a pool for this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, stop, stop. Let's, let's, let's get it going. I guess the question. Go right for it then. <laughs> if, if, the question I have if council decides to, to vote this ordinance down or this agreement down and we put it out to bid, and I know you guys in waste management aren't the only trash collectors in the county. Or in, in the area. So if you was able to win the bid, then on the second year, would it go up dramatically? I don't know. If it, I don't know. I think it's, it's, they're they're, not, they're not the that. company yet. They can't answer and I, that. And I would ask anybody that. Yes, yeah, but they're not going to answer it. Are you asking if right. the cost increases going to go year two? Pardon me? Yeah, are you asking right, if the right. cost increases going to go up? Hey, on, guys. Hey, guys. I said, would it go up? Guys, I would. Could it go up? Hey, Mr. Bridge, Mr. Lindsay, I would hold off on any type of this. I just, I think that's a dangerous question to start asking. Because you're not giving, if this fails, it goes out the bid, you, you just gave them somewhat of an advantage, in my opinion. I just, I would dread very lightly. Well, questions. I would think their answer would be yes. <laughs> but I don't see how they could answer it because you don't know what next year's, you know, economy is going to be like. But, but, it, but nine times out of ten, it's going to go up. As I'm sure waste management will go up in three years after this. If we extend it by two years, in three years, it's going to go up. It, as sure as I'm sitting here, I can guarantee it will go up, you know, uh, with waste management. 
So, Mr. Mayor, with that said, I'm gonna after let... him, I call for the vote. Mr. Cook. Two factors. We all see increases. Except for the paycheck. Except for the paycheck or Social Security. <laughs> Oh, that's not, that's not we good. have an opportunity well, when you see an increase at the gas station, the restaurants, wherever. If you want to pay that increase, that's fine. If you don't, you seek alternatives. Now, as far as the bid going up the second year, I assume this would be probably a three to five year contract the automatic increases would be included in that bid and you would put in there a safeguard so that if they needed anything over and above their bid price they have to come back from count come back to council to allow you the opportunity to rebid this contract All right we're done thanks Yes. Okay. With that, Mr. Mayor, All right, Ms. Burner, if you would put us out of our misery. Yes. Oh, exactly. please. Vice Mayor Grit. Yeah, uh, no. I forgot what we were voting for. No. <laughs> Councilman Vaughn. No. Councilwoman Eggleston. No. Councilman Cook. No. Councilman Lindsay. No. Councilman Roadwell. Yes. Mayor Lowry. I'll just go with yes because it won't matter. Okay. <laughs> that fails to five. But seriously, even though I voted the way you didn't want, I ser seriously, I appreciate it because I would think that some other people may have showed up in this process. So thank you, seriously. All right. Okay. And moving on. Yes, moving on. So we'll be having a work session on that because if we're going to rebid it, then we're going to redo the contract from top to bottom. Yeah. And then look at how things council wants to be done. Fair enough. Yep. Thank you. All righty. I'm on 33, right? Correct. Okay. Ordinance 2023-33 introduced on May 1st, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance amending section 1460.25 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle to address the placement of residential trash and recycling containers. Okay, so I'm gonna assume that's gonna die for because we don't need it, right? That's the one you we had multiple sessions on, yeah, and you guys it. wanted to word it one foot away from Oh, that one. I'm sorry, I was thinking of something it's else. The one so this is the one we want. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so we would love that. No, I'm sorry, I was thinking of something else. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, I'll move to accept this order. Seconds. So motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Roadwell. Okay, Lindsay. Hold on a minute. I had to switch to I got Lindsay and Lindsay Roadwell. I lost my name. Can I go without confusing you? <clears throat> can, I, can I do the explanation without going no? No, not yet. Who was the first? <laughs> Lindsay was Lindsay the first. Lindsay Roadwall. Got it. Yes, now you can go. Thank you. All right, so an explanation to this ordinance. So uh, this was a couple meetings that council had to come to this one. So this has to do with where the residential trash cans are going to be placed non-collection days. So 24 hours at the curb before after collection. After that, they have to be within a certain foot of your house. Uh, within a foot of, I don't remember what it says, it's in a foot and then something else. So forgive me for not recalling that correctly, YouTube. Well said, sir. Thank you. Thank you. When you're ready, Council, any discussion before we have Ms. Bernard do her thing? All right, when you're ready. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? No. Councilman Bond? No. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? No. Councilman Lindsay? No. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. That fails. Three. Nope, oh, that passes. Four to three. I was going to say. Sorry. Okay. So it passed four to three? What? Yeah. No, it failed. One, two, three. No, it, you're, I'm, failed. it failed. Four to three to four. So we're just back yeah. at having the yeah. hands in the middle of the road? Middle of the road. I don't know what. We had like three meetings on that. It's, Who voted no? Did Mr. Lindsay vote no? Mm -hmm. You're the one who worded the ordinance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're just back at, okay. We're back enough. to what we, we had. had. Back huh? to what we had. You, you, the ordinance is two sections. 
One is the removal, the other is the placement. Yeah. Take that placement out. So where do you want them to place it? Think you put it in the middle of the yard? Put them wherever you want. All right. I don't much. think we have okay. the right. Wow. Okay, so then you don't have the, then the, should we just stop tagging people for tall grass? Right. Well, because we spent we're, we're trying to figure out please, how to stop. do the job. Because you know? we, we spent multiple probably hours up here discussing this. It is how it is. I don't think we're arguing, I'm just asking for direction because they're saying that we don't have a right to tell them where to put a trash can, but we have a right to tell them to cut the grass. So I'm just trying to clear out how we're going to move forward with the Sierra property maintenance moving on. Okay, here, here's like, if it's sitting at the street on Tuesday or Tuesday I mean, morning, yeah, there's nothing we can do about it. Okay. If it's in the middle of somebody's yard, it's overflowing with maggots, there's nothing we can do about it. Okay, so we just leave that, okay, move, move on. So that one fails, four to three, right? But if there's a trash can at the curb on Tuesday, right in the picture. Right in two if there's two. All right, moving on. Okay, 2023-34. This was this is introduced tonight. Public hearing in action on July 17th, 2020. That is correct. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Creating the Honey Creek Tax Increment Financing Incentive Districts. Declaring improvements to the parcels within each incentive district to be a public purpose and exempt from real property taxation, requiring the owners to those parcels to make service payments in lieu of taxes, establishing a municipal public improvement tax increment equi equivalent fund for the deposit of those service payments, requiring the distribution of a portion of those service payments to the Tecumseh Local School District and the Springfield Clark Career Technology Center and specifying the public infrastructure improvements that benefit or serve parcels in the incentive district. I've got ordinance 2023-35, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on June 5th. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to retain Red Tree Investment Group to manage certain city investments with US Bank serving as custodian. Ordinance 2023-36, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on June 5th. An ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds in excess of $35,000 for the purchase of a compressor and fill station equipment needed for self-contained breathing apparatuses used by the New Carlisle Fire EMS Division. Ordinance 2023-37, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on June 5th. An ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds in excess of $35,000 for the purchase of self-contained breathing apparatuses and related equipment used by the New Carlisle Fire EMS Division. Ordinance 2023-38E, introduction tonight, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager or the director of public service assistant city manager to enter into an agreement with the board of Clark County Commissioners for the 2023 roadway resurfacing project and declaring an emergency. All right, other business. Uh, charter oh, review. Got a vote on that one. Oh, I'm so sorry. Good. I apologize. <laughs> My apologies. Go ahead. I move. Motion second by Ms. Hagelston. Uh, for an explanation of this ordinance, we will resort to our director of public service, last assistant city manager, Mr. Pitko. Uh, so this ordinance is to have an agreement with the county. They've already fit it out. As you can see in the last table, what our share will be initially for Falcon. And then two ADA grants, which would be included with that. We will be holding off on the Zimmerman ADA grants because it will be part of if Zimmerman ever gets redone. And then the, not to the expenditure of the funds above the 100000 that is to include um, ADA grants. And then if we... Uh, if the pricing is still good for the addition, we might be able to do a little bit more paving, but that's undecided at this point. Council, any questions or comments for Mr. Pitko? <coughs> Please, when you will. All right, Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. That passes 7-0.
Okay, moving on to other business. Uh, charter review and alcohol ballot uh, measures, public campaign, work session on 6-12, 6 p.m. at the Shelter House, and any open, open for any other city discussion? Council, any discussions? Um, I just want to add something because I know we, you know, we just got over that, and this is just me venting, really. I, uh, you know, yes, I, I understand that some, you know, that some people, and I'm not naming names. I'm just saying in general, some people have their opinions about, you know, government overreach, and you know what we should and shouldn't be able to tell people mm -hmm. of what they do, whether it's grass, trash cans, uh, you know, whatever it may be. Uh, we're not a homeowners association, but at the same time, we are. It's our job to make sure that this this city stays tidy and clean. And if we start letting little bits here and here go, it's it's going to slowly get worse and worse. We have two new developments, maybe three. They're going to want to come into town. If, you know, it, it, you, you'd hit on it, Mr. Bridge. If we don't want to tell them where we think they should put their trash cans, okay, that's I, I kind of understand it. But at the same time, like just like you said, then why are we telling them how? keep their grass low or they can't have graffiti painted on the side of their garage or you know whatever the, the, the issues are boats in the back of the yards I remember that was a big issue for Mr. Cook I mean there's all these things that people say well I live in New Palau I pay my taxes I, I, I own this property I shouldn't be told that I can't have last topic at the last meeting chickens in my yard I want to have chickens or I want to have eight dogs instead of uh, the rule of I think two or three um, you know if we just let the town go, no one's going to want to move here. Right? You've got to have a little bit of order. People may not understand it, but it's our job to make sure it stays clean and tight. Not, not just not move here, but not invest here. Right. And, you know. But that's all I want to say. I'm not, you know, arguing with the council. Everybody's. That's why there's seven of us, and we all have our own opinions. I just. You know. I objected to the one foot because if you make a certain measurement, that's not going to be at, uh, uh, available to everyone. Had it been, had it been one position. foot or as close as practical, yes, I would have gone for it. Right. But it has to be within one foot. You could have amended that on the. You could have amended for the vote. Huh? You could have amended that for the vote. But the reason why we had said we wanted a, a specific measurement is because if you have anything above a specific measurement or closest proximity, that leaves um, that leaves up for um, someone to be have their preference. So basically, our code guy now may be okay with one foot six inches, but the next guy coming in may be okay with two feet. So that's why you have to streamline it, make code less black and white as possible. You know, I mean, less gray as possible, pretty black and white. But there is probably a good five, 10 minute discussion on specifically why we wanted an exact measurement and it is to allow for that lack of discretion when that person issues the ticket. A foot is a foot, no matter if it's 12 inches on, it's a foot to foot versus or as close as possible leaves up for the next person to say, well, under that guy it was okay, but now I'm in charge, it's a little different. So that's why the foot was set the way But I don't think any, any reasonable person would consider two feet more objectionable than one foot. Um, when now, you're, 20 feet, yeah. Well, when you're a code yard. enforcement officer, that's your sole discretion. And that, what, I'm sorry, what? When you're the code enforcement officer, if you have that, that's his sole discretion. So it doesn't, it's what his interpretation is. So again, to reiterate, if you set a foot or as close as possible, who our current code guy, maybe 22 inches is okay. But the next guy coming in after him may not be like, may, may not like the 22. That's why you want to have it a foot. So it's set for everyone coming in. There is no discretion. A speed limit isn't 35 ish. It's 35. It's allow for that cop to be A or A or B, you know, that's where you're speeding or not speeding. That's different. So that's why it was worded the way it was. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Thanks for all the discussion tonight, guys. Good meeting, I think. <laughs> There's a lot to go through. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was interesting. So thank you. Sir, move to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Lindsay. Second. Second by Ms. Eggleston to adjourn. And Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes.
Councilman Rodwell? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Absolutely. Pass the 7-0. <laughs>